Have you ever wondered which string gauges you should use for your guitar playing? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about that very thing. Hey folks, Eric Beatty back once again. And today we're going to be talking about string gauges. Now, us guitarists have a lot of issues uh, because there are so many toys that we can play with. There's so many ways we can customize our playing. We can get different guitars. We can get all kinds of strings. We can get all kinds of picks. We can get different uh, pickup configurations. But one thing that I've really never had a question asked about is string gauges. Now, I think that's very important to address because, yes, we, if you've watched any of my videos for any length of time now, you'll know that I'm a big guitar string connoisseur. I've tried all kinds of different strings and I find myself coming back to pretty much the same ones every time. But I've never been asked the question about string gauges. So I thought that would be a good one to address today because lately I've been experimenting with that myself. More specifically, I started with my acoustic guitar and for years I've used Elixir strings and that's these purple packages right here. Elixir strings. Uh, as you can see, I use the Phosphor Bronze for years, I used lights when I was beginning, uh, just starting out. Then when I got into bluegrass really heavy, uh, along about 2008, I switched to medium lights, or these are called light mediums. The gauges for the lights are usually 12 to 52, sometimes 53, but these light mediums are 12 to 56. And that gives me a low bottom end still, uh, and the tension is a little bit tighter, but I still don't have much force and much tension on my lower my higher strings with my fingers my, i found that my fingers were kind of tiring out after playing long shows after playing and practicing long hours so i decided to switch to light mediums probably about two or three years ago and that's really improved uh, my stamina on guitar playing and what you'll find with different string brands is uh, that the gauges kind of stay the same overall uh, in general Usually lights will be, for electric, there'll be a set of um, tens. Sometimes those are called mediums, depending on the brand that you have. But no matter what the name of the brand is, the numbers are always going to be what that is. So in other words, tens are always going to be uh, the same for every brand, for the most part. Nines, if you buy them in one brand, they're still going to be the same tension and the same gauge in any other brand. Uh, there is one company, however, that I find is a little bit different on that that I've tried myself, and that is DR Strings. DR Strings, they have a reverse wound process, which makes the string a little flimsier than what it normally would be. So typically, if you're trying to, if you're used to a set of nines, and you buy a set of nines in DR Strings, they'll feel even slinkier. I don't know how the math works out on that and the science works out on that, but that's typically the way it works. So you, for DR Strings, typically you would get a gauge higher than what you're normally used to. But for myself... I, I've tended to stick with uh, 12 to 56, the light mediums for elixirs, which is good and bad in a way. It's good because they, they do make them that way, but it's bad because you can't get any three packs of these. You can't get a good deal on these because I guess they're more of a custom string. There's just no sales for three packs on, on this particular gauge. It's kind of like a, I don't know if you'd want to call it a boutique or whatever, but they're more you'll find more sales on like 80-20 bronze lights or 80-20 bronze medium. Or sometimes phosphor bronze that way too. When you're when you're trying to be a little picky, kind of like I am, and you're trying to give your fingers a rest. Typically, you have to pay a la carte in that sense. Now, for myself, for years on the electric guitar side, for years I've used the nine to forty twos. Okay, now the nine to forty twos, I'm usually uh, using one or one or two different brands. Uh, most of the time, it's super, uh, Ernie Ball Slinkies or Super Slinkies here. That's what the Super Slinky are. That's a some brands uh, consider light gauge nines. Some brands consider super light gauge nines. Whatever the name is on the package, you really want to pay attention to the numbers. That's what's the, the main thing. So these are a set of 9 to 42. Okay, 9 to 42. All right. And as you can see on here, those are 12 to 56. Super slinkies are the nines. And in Fender Bullets, I think they're just called lots, Fender Strings. The brands that I use the most are Ernie Ball and... Diodario are really good, the XLs. I've never used the NY Steel. I'd like to try those sometime. And the other one, uh, believe it or not, are the Dunlop strings. Jim Dunlop, Jim Dunlop strings make very good strings. But I use typically use 9 to 42 on most of my guitars. I have an Ibanez RG4EX1, 
and I use nines on those, and I want to keep it that way because that's such a pain. It's a Floyd Rose style guitar, and it's such a pain to get that set up every time to set that up. Also, on my other Ibanez, it's an I think it's an SA-130 MFM, something like that. It's my red guitar that's an Ibanez. I use nines on that one. However, with my newest guitar, the Ibanez AZ-242BC, Well, this guitar, it came shipped with tens, okay? It came shipped with tens, and I find that they, they feel really good, except for the lower string. The higher string the too tight, and that's a good general, you know, idea of picking out the string gauges. What do they feel like under your fingers? Are the tens hurting your fingers? Are they too hard to get to, to get to those pitches? I find that, in my own case, with the tens. I've never been able to upgrade to tens, but... Uh, this car, the guitar, it's about time for me to change strings on these. And they came fitted with um, Diodarios. And they have they still sound fairly new. And I've had this guitar for several months now. I think it was since February or March when I bought it. And it's September now, close to the end of September. So those are very good strings. The Diodario XLs is what it shipped with, the 10s. But what I've decided to recently do is since I experiment so much, I wanted to try... Um, I wanted to see, I wanted to still contain, retain that bottom end, but still have a little bit more give and slack in the higher strings, the G through the E. And so I decided to get a different kind of slinkies. These are hybrids. These are uh, what you would call basically a medium light type thing. The 9, instead of 9 to 42, it's 9 to 46. Now, if you look at these comparison wise, these are 9, 11, 16. 9, 11, 16 for the top strings, the high strings, and then it changes 24, 32, 42, 26, 36, 46, okay? So this gives me the low end that I'd like to have still, but it gives me a little bit of release and relief on the higher strings so that I can bend quite a bit easier. And also it saves me from having to do a massive setup on my guitar. The guitar itself, I've noticed that the bridge, when it came uh, shipped from... Uh, Sweetwater, the bridge is angled back a little bit, and I need it to come up, up a little bit. But rather than doing that myself, I thought, well, I'll experiment with the string change because the tension will be less, so it might help it a little bit, and it won't be a major overhaul going from 10s to 9s. Typically, some good things to look for are, are your fingers hurting when you play? Um, usually for beginners, I recommend lights, uh, 9 to 42 in, in electric, and then 12 to 53 in acoustic. Those are just the best to start out with to get your hands used to the calluses, get your hands used to the, you know, playing long uh, chords for a long amount of time. Um, then once you're experienced enough to know what you like and what you, you know, kind of want to experiment with, you can see about going either to mediums. Now on my Martin guitar, I use, uh, actually, I think I use a medium lights on my Martin guitar as well. Uh, I decided to do that all the way around. It just make, makes it a lot easier. You may have different guitars that you do for different things. Some people use a different guitars for a drop, drop tuning. So they use 10s or even 11s so they can get that low tone and still retain some tuning stability. Myself, I don't I don't play detuned a lot, so I just stick with kind of 9s across the board. Plus that keeps me from having to buy a whole lot of different kind of string sets. These I will be only using on that Ibanez guitar, uh, the AZ series. And I'm curious to see how they feel. It's about time to change these strings again, so I'm curious to see how they feel and what they're going to feel like. You know, how, how well they're going to play. But... Uh, um, I have total confidence in Ernie Ball. They have some really good strings out there. So be aware. What do your hands feel like if you're, if you're thinking about going to a different string gauge? Here's some things to keep in mind. You will probably have to get another setup. If it's a complete new gauge instead of a hybrid like that, if it's from 9s going all the way to 10s or even 9s to like 11s or heavier, then you're going to need to have your guitar adjusted. It's going to need a, a setup again. Typically the truss rod has to be adjusted because of the neck relief is going to be different with a, uh, a lower or higher tension string. You will need to uh, do the intonation again. Uh, that's the saddles on the bottom. Now I'm, I'm talking about electric guitars for now. You have to do the intonation on the end as well. You will have to adjust the claw springs on the back of the guitar. If it's a lighter gauge string than what you're used to, then the claw is going to be pulling a little bit more and the bridge is going to be pulling a little bit more so you'll have to loosen those claws if it's a looser if it's a tighter string then the claw is going to be it's going to be the strings are going to be heavier in tension than the claw and the bridge is going to kind of come up like this so you have to tighten the claw and make it balance it's a if it's a floating tremolo usually it's just kind of a you know a balancing act it doesn't take a lot to figure it out a lot of times you may have to add or remove a claw spring because of that 
Uh, I did that once with, with my Floyd Rose style guitar, the Ibanez RG4 EX1. Could not figure out why before I had nines on and it worked just fine. And then I put nines on again and for some reason it was completely out of whack. Well, I found out that I had to add another claw spring. I didn't even change the tension on the springs. It's just that I forgot to brace the uh, bridge itself when I was changing the strings. Or I may have changed them all at once instead of one at a time like I meant to. I think that's what happened. And it's completely out of whack. But I added one spring and it completely, it was balanced then. And it, the tremolo even feels not uh, a lot better. With this guitar, I haven't even opened the back yet. So I don't know how many springs we've got. It looks like three springs total. And they are fairly... Possibly fairly, you know, tight. I don't, the claw doesn't look too far back. When I put those nines, uh, not, uh, the medium hybrid slinkies on there, I will probably have to tighten the claw just a little bit. Hopefully not, because there's a little bit of give that can happen. But hopefully uh, I won't have to worry about that. So those are some things to think about. If you're thinking about changing to a different string gauge, it's going to require a new setup. Now, if you can do that yourself, no problem. Typical setups at a guitar shop is going to run you about $50. Okay, so is that worth it to you? for an experiment. You may want to do research on YouTube on how to do it yourself. If you're not confident, do take it to a authorized local dealer. I do recommend that. But you got your truss rod, you got to uh, set up again the, the saddles and the intonation and the claw springs in the back. I may be forgetting something, but that's the main three that I'm thinking of. So those are some things I just wanted to bring to your attention and let you know about when it comes to string gauges. One more thing, and that's acoustic guitars. Typically, you'll still have to do a truss rod adjustment. But since there's no saddle adjustments in most acoustic guitars, you may or may not want to kind of like put a shim in the bottom of the saddle to raise raise it or even sand the saddle off to lower it a little bit. Now, I still recommend you take it to a dealer if you're going to try to sand some off because you can't put it back. When you add, you can take it away, but you cannot put it back. You know, it's, it's, you have to buy a new saddle. But so just think about that. With acoustic guitars, like I said, most of the time, you just it's a truss rod adjustment. There's nothing really big or major on that because there's not a lot of moving components. With an electric guitar, if you're, you've got a float, floating bridge, there are some moving components. And those springs will cause the bridge to move. And the, the truss rod is another adjustment. And like I said, the intonation. Typically on an acoustic, acoustic guitar, you can't deal with intonation, but it's not usually a big deal. It's not usually a big problem. So I just wanted to present that idea to you today. For your consideration think about it and see if that's something that you would want to do change guitar string gauges and uh, let me know in the comments below if you have what your ideas are and if you have any more tips for anybody watching now what your ideas would be for when you have to change your string gauges for any reason that's it for me today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next video